makes sense. That's a pretty believable lie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about five of the strangest disappearances of kids. But before we get started, I'm Sophia Lovelace and I post about ghost schools, anything creepy and cool. So if you like any of that stuff, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to be notified when I have new uploads. Also when you're down there, make sure to hit the bell icon so you're one of the first people notified when I have a new upload. Also, you'll get a notification when I premiere videos, which is an opportunity for me to watch my videos live with you and answer your questions that you might have about my videos or um, your theories or just anything like that. If you want to chat with me, make sure to hit the bell icon. So if you guys are new to my channel, you probably haven't noticed anything different. But if you are an old subscriber or have been here for a few months or a few weeks, because I've really grown in the last few weeks, as you can see, I have a new set. Now, it's not 100% perfect, but I still have uh, some cool things going on here. I got a unicorn, I got a Sasquatch, I got a witch down there. You can't really see it in the camera now, but we're gonna be working on a way so you can see all of my creepy goodness in the background and I'm thinking about getting like a tablecloth for this because white kind of doesn't go with the theme of this creepy channel. So that is something new. I'm really excited uh, to try out this new set. Let me know what you think about it down below. I made sure to include Sally the Scarecrow because so many of you guys have either commented in the comments that you love Sally and you think that she's funny and hilarious and then other people stating that you think she looks pretty creepy. So either way, you guys have a very strong reaction to Sally the Scarecrow. So I'm gonna leave her in the background for now and make sure to leave your thoughts down below what you think about Sally the Scarecrow. Should I keep her in the background or should I put something else there? Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. The Charlie Project is a database which holds all the information about any unsolved missing persons case. Now the majority of the cases are from the 20th and the 21st century or the 1900s or the 2000s, but there is a few on there that are from the 18 and 1700s, which is just really sad if you think about it because once it gets to that point of being over 100 or 200 years old, it's nearly impossible to solve where these people went missing. So the chances of them being found or discovering what happened to them are very slim. But the majority of the cases are set in the 20th century, and that is mostly the stories I'm going to be covering today. So the first case is of Bobby Duncan in Louisiana in 1912. So Bobby Duncan is a fairly common case. A lot of people People know about it but no one's been able to come up with a concrete theory about what possibly could have happened to him. So he was four years old and he was just hanging out with his family outside at a family gathering and his family members lost sight of him for uh, not even like three minutes they state and then suddenly Bobby had disappeared. Now there is the possibility that Bobby did fall off of a railroad and drowned but there was also reports of a strange man walking around the area during the time of Bobby's disappearance. Now another common theory that is flown around, it was not in the article that I got this information from which will be linked down in the description box below but uh, when I hear this story often a lot of people think that he was abducted by aliens. Now that is up for you to decide. Of course, there isn't much information on on this case, but the fact that he purely disappeared without a trace is kind of disturbing. But also, that is not the end of the Bobby Duncan story. The police thought they had found Bobby Duncan, and his family thought that they found Bobby Duncan too. But it wasn't until around 2004 that it was discovered that the Bobby Duncan that was returned to the family wasn't the real Bobby Duncan. So this boy, who eventually grew into a man, lived his life as Bobby Duncan for the rest of his life. But it wasn't until police files and a further investigation until 2004 that it was discovered that he actually wasn't Bobby Duncan and was actually another missing child. 
but they still don't know what happened to the real Bobby Duncan, which is just very strange. Now this of course makes the issue a little bit more complex. Some people, if you guys believe in fairies, um, I don't think I believe in fairies, that's just a personal note, but if you believe in fairies, is he maybe a changeling or something like that? That's why a lot of people think that maybe this case has something to do with aliens, that they put like an alien child. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it sounds like a ridiculous science fiction idea, but it does sound fairly believable considering how strange this case is. Billy Griffney was four years old while he was playing with a three-year-old neighbor in the hallway of his apartment building. A few minutes later, the three-year-old was found on the roof of the building claiming that the boogeyman had taken him to the roof and taken Billy. The three-year-old described the boogeyman as looking like local serial killer Albert Fish, and it wasn't until a few years later that Albert Fish actually confessed to the murder of Billy. However, his body has not been found. So this one is just titled Mary, which happened in Illinois, 1930. So this one is particularly sad because it is set during the Great Depression, and a lot of people were just looking for cheap babysitters because they couldn't afford very much and they needed to go to work to earn money. So there was this one woman, Julia Otis, who agreed to take in Mary and to babysit her because she was feeling very lonely since her husband had passed away. So she was hoping that, or what she stated that she was hoping um, is that she wouldn't, she would feel less lonely by taking care of the child and babysitting the child, which makes sense. That's a pretty believable lie. Because when her parents came to pick up Mary, the woman no longer had her and claimed she didn't know where she went. Now this brings into the question, was Julia involved? Did someone um, just take Mary and Julia just wasn't a very good babysitter and didn't keep a good eye on her? We really don't know what happened. And there's a very likely possibility that this girl could still be alive. So she would be 80 years old right now and she could have no idea who she was or where she came from because like it stated in the article, she was two years old at the time. Georgia Reckler. Now I really love the name Georgia. I don't know why. I also love the name Dakota. What is up with me and names that are named after states? Why do I feel the need to include this in this video? So this story is set in Wisconsin in 1947. Now this story is very short but very creepy. So she was around eight years old and out of nowhere her parents claimed that she developed a fear of being kidnapped. Now they could not figure out why she developed this fear but she had it for a few weeks before she disappeared. Now that is just really disturbing and is kind of obvious what happened to her, but she still has not been found. Now this is the story of Bruce and it's set in California in 1960. Now Bruce was attending a camp, a summer camp, near the San Gabriel Mountains. So he was playing with a few boys a little bit of a short distance away from the majority of the group and no one knows what happened, maybe he wandered off, and the police for the longest time concluded that he just wandered off into the mountains and got lost. However, it wasn't until the police came in contact with the serial killer of Mark Ray Edwards that they realized that the serial killer, even though he is very unknown, he is one of the most prolific serial killers in American history, he was actually working on a construction site right near the camp. So they suspect that he murdered the boy and possibly buried it in the local construction site, which is just very sad and it makes me really uncomfortable thinking about that because imagine just going to camp and having fun and having that tragic event happen to you. The next story is set in Pennsylvania, 1938. So there was a young girl who was four years old and she was outside a church uh, her local church with her 11 year old sister picking flowers. Georgina Tain was praised for running the Tennessee Children's Home Society, where she would state that she would take orphans and connect them with families. 
However, that is not the case. What she was actually doing was kidnapping children and selling them to wealthy families, usually in California. Since she kidnapped kids so young, there is a very likely scenario where a lot of these children are still alive, most likely, and have no idea who they are or that they were kidnapped or abducted or stolen. Like, that makes me really sad that these people have no idea what their story is. And this is even more saddening because they were kidnapped and they were taken from a loving family already and basically sold for money, which is really, really disturbing and it makes me really uncomfortable. So that is the end of my video today. Hopefully you guys liked it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully the banging in my garage is not too crazy. Let me know down below what was the most terrifying story on this list or what was the saddest story on this list. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. If you like this video and if you like my other creepy content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below to be notified when I have new uploads. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you're one of the first people notified when I have a new upload. And I think that's it for today. Stay spooky and bye!